Here is the CSV file that we got from the marketing manager. It contains four columns, the promotion name, which is the name of the campaign that he uh, has run in 1997, then products in promotion, referring to which products are included in the promotion. And here you have the business keys, so not surrogate keys, so mind that for later. And then two columns, start date and end date, saying when, when the com campaign start and when it ended. So products referring to those product uh, numbers, business keys, are uh, within the campaign and ones outside of the date scope are of course not run on the, that campaign. There are two ways that we can load data from a CSV file into our data warehouse in Management Studio. There is an easy way and a hard way. Let me show you the easy way first. You can right click and then you choose task. Then further down you have import flat file and that brings up a wizard. Then in this wizard you hit the next button. Then you choose the location of your promotions.csv file and you choose a schema. Since I'm using schemas, I choose stage because I'm staging data. And then just for the purpose of this, let me call it promotion easy way or the point and click way. Then you get a preview of data showing you all the data that it has loaded. And you can see that the first um, entry has been promoted to headers. So we have the, the header names now, promotion name, products and promotion, start date and end date. And all the data looks uh, exactly like you just verified that it looked in the CSV file in Excel. Once you verify that the data is correct, uh, go ahead and hit the next button. Here you have modified columns and you can see uh, that of course we had the first entry promoted to headers and you can change the data types if you need to. And if you're happy with it, just go ahead and click the next button. Here is a summary of all the steps that has been done in the wizard. And if you're happy with that, go ahead and click next and we can see that it was successful. And now we have data in our uh, staging table and you can verify by going in and seeing that we have stage promotion easy way if we do select sub thousand we can see that all the records are here now i will go ahead and show you the code way first we have to create the staging table to st stage data a stage table to put our data in and I've shown you that several times so I'll just go ahead and do it. This creates our table. If we go in and do an update here we can verify that the table has actually been generated and you can see that it's here staged dim promotions select top thousand we can see that it's empty because we haven't inserted any data yet. Now let's go on ahead and insert some data the code way. So there are several ways to do this. One of them is using bulk insert and the code for this is bulk insert into and then staged in promotions from and then you provide the location in single quotes mark and you give it a width so you can set some arguments for, for this bulk insert. The first argument is field terminator. So it says when is there going to be a new field? What is the first row of data? That's the second row because the actual like first row is uh, for our headers. What code page and what is the row terminator? When do we have a new row? So if we go ahead and execute this, we can see that 10 rows have been affected. That's because we've inserted 10 uh, records into our stage dim promotion table. So now that we have our data in the stage part of our data warehouse, the next step in a normal ETL load 
is of course to uh, transfer our data from our staging layer to what I refer to as my EDW schema here. So uh, if we look at the data, it's going to be easy enough for the start date and end date to make a lookup to the date table in order to find the surrogate keys for uh, the date formats. And for the promotion name, it's going to be simple enough because when we insert our data into our EDV uh, layer, by design, we have this identity column that uh, it produces an integer that just increments. The problem, however, is going to be with our products and promotion, because as you can see, they're separated with commas. So how can we make lookups to the products table to find the circuit keys? We will get back to that later. But first, let me create a table uh, dim promotions in our EDW schema. I've shown you that several times, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it without explaining it then we can verify that that table exists. Now you will see EDV dim promotions is there. So no problem. Now we need to get the data into that table. And in order to do that, we make an insert statement where we select promotion name and our start date and end date date IDs from, uh, from our, um, by looking up to the dim date uh, dimension, of course. So uh, first select promotion name, then join a uh, dim promotions to the EDV dim date and join that on the start date to date. And uh, if we try and execute this uh, select statement, we will see that it generates the data that we're expecting. So first let's execute that. Yes, we now have surrogate keys in this int format for date ID on start date and end date over here. So uh, once you know that that's going to work, go ahead and execute it with the whole insert into statement. Execute that, we get 10 rows affected and we're happy. The next step we have to do, let me show you over here. Uh, refresh, find the dim promotion table, dim promotion, select a thousand you can see that we then have all the records. So the next step that I have to do is insert a record in here so that if it's not a promotion, we can still say that it's not a promotion, not give the promotion. And the way that we can do this is if we return back to our uh, small query statement here, we start out by setting in identity insert on the dim promotions columns to on, which allows us to write to the identity column. And then, uh, of course, in the end, I have to take it off. But uh, between setting it on and off, I actually insert a value. And here I chose minus one because that can never happen with an automatic, uh, automatically incrementing integer that starts at one. So I give it the value minus one and I say that's for no promotion. So if I execute this statement, you will see one row affected. And if we go back here and update, you can see now I have a minus one, no promotion with no start date and end date provided. Okay, so we return to our uh, ER diagram and we have here the dim promotions that we have just created with the promo ID surrogate key. And uh, here we have some products and they of course relate to one promotion to several products and several products to several sales in the effect sales table. So how can we handle that in uh, in SQL. Well, we do what Kimball calls a bridge table that we can insert here in order to handle the relationship between the dim promotion and the fact sales. And uh, for this uh, video, I've just uh, made it already and I copy pasted it in to make video making easier for me. So now we have a relationship between the promo ID here in dim promotions that we can then establish a foreign key relationships to the promotion bridge table. And from the promotion bridge table, we can then use this promo prod ID, which is also now going to be a surrogate key uh, to the fact sales table in a foreign key relationship. And I'm going to show you how to make this design. So first uh, we we create this stage dim promotion bridge table. And then we need to fill some data into that bridge table. 
And uh, let's go back and look at the table definition for a second. So what we need is promo ID and products in promotion. So these, of course, uh, come from the data that we have in our uh, stage DIM promotions and in our EDV DIM promotions when we have the surrogate keys. So here we have the products in promotions and in the EDV, w, uh, EDV w DIM promotions, of course, we don't have this uh, products in promotion. We only have the circuit keys and the circuit keys for, for um, dimension. And you can see I have minus one, no promotion two times. That was a mistake. Just ignore that. So then uh, we have here the products in promotion, and those are the ones that we need to split out. And we can do that using this function called string split, in which we take products in promotion and then split it for every time we see a comma. And then using cross apply, and I've copied the definition of cross apply in here, we can join that with the surrogate keys that we have on our EDV DIM promotions table. So that for each time we see a promo ID and each time we have different products, we now have a new record in the final table. And if we execute that select statement, you will see that this is actually what happens. So here we have the, the on the lower hand, we have the two stage DIM promotion and EDVW uh, dim promotions and you can see here now the products and promotion have been split out and for every record we now have the promo ID and the, the relevant product that we have here. So this is uh, what we're going to insert into our stage dim promotion table and that looks like this. So the next thing we have to do is create this EDV DIMP promotion bridge table in which we have the promo ID, so that's the surrogate key for, for what promotion it is, and then a promo prod ID, which, which is our cross product from earlier, and then the products uh, in promotion int. And I'm going to go ahead and create that table. You've seen me do that several times, so I've successfully now created the table. The next thing we have to do is insert into that, and rather than making a meaningless integer key, I'm just going to concat promo ID and PID since they're both integers, then combining them, just sticking them together like this, it will yield my, my um, surrogate key for the, for the promo ID. Then uh, concat those, then select them from the dim promotion bridge table in the stage area, join to products and join that on the products and promotion PID to our previously cross product uh, of, of the the bridge table in the stage area. So if I go ahead and execute that, I can see that 36 rows have been affected. And if we then look at what data is now in our EDV DIM promotion bridge table by doing this select from, then we can see that the, the minus one for promo ID is missing. And that's because of the way this uh, cross apply has worked. If you scroll back in the video, you can reread the comments on that. So we need to insert that minus one record. And we do that by inserting into the EDV DIM promotion bridge table. And the values that we need to insert is uh, for a promo ID, it's minus one. So we can link it up to the promotion DIMS table. And on the promo prod ID in which I just combined, concatenated them, it of course also has to be minus one and then null because there are no products that are not sold, uh, that are sold not on promotions, right? Everything else is, is just there. Then if we select, we can see that the final row has been inserted like this. Let's move on to the next part, which is to add this promo prod ID to our EDV w, uh, fact sales table. And in order to do that, we first need to alter the table and add promo prod ID as a, a field on that table. And we can do that successfully and then uh, verify that that table now looks like we intended to by selecting star from and then look at fact sales and we can see promo prod ID is now a column in the table, except we haven't filled any data into this. So we now need to fill the data in, which means we need to update the fact table. So then we need to uh, update the fact table. And in order to do that, I use this uh, sub query where I join the promotions and the 
the bridge table. And you can see that what that does by executing this part, part with the select statement you execute it. You can now see I have the promo ID, the promo prod ID, the products and promotion, and the circuit keys for start and end date. And I refer to that as my sub queue for sub query. And then uh, what happens now is I update, update the facts tables and I set promo prod ID to is null. And then from the sub query, I get this promo prod ID. And if it is null, I Put it as minus one otherwise i put the value from promo prod id from our uh, subquery and then choose that from edb fact sales uh, join that to the subquery and then on the products id equal to subqueries products in promotion column and on the order id uh, and then from the subquery again the surrogate keys for the start date and end date which uh, tells us when the promotion happened. And uh, if I run all this bit of code, what happens is that I update the promo prod ID on our fact tables to the correct promo prod ID in the bridge table so that I can connect them later. Jumping a little bit ahead, you can now see that if I run this select star from EDV fact sales statement, you'll see the promo ID, pro, promo prod ID has been updated. So it's minus one for all the records in the fact sales table where there was not a sale on a promotion. And then it has the promo prod ID whether if in fact was a sale on promotion. Now, in order to answer the question that Johannes has about promotion, we will select the sum of line total from the EDV fact sales table and then join that on the promotion bridge and the promotion using the surrogate keys for, for those tables. Then in the where statement, we put promo ID is not minus one, so they're not sold off promotions, but rather on promotions. And then uh, if we do that, we of course get all the, the products sold on, on the different kinds of promotions. If we select that statement and run it, we can see that the total sales from promotions is 4,905 in the local currency. And we must conclude that Johannes needs to up his game and make some better promotions to try and push some more products.